Welcome to God's Love Talking with Dr. Diane. I'm so happy you're all here with me again tonight or today, whatever time of day it is for you in whatever part of the world you live. We are just very happy you're with us t tonight. And I'm going to open in prayer and we are going to talk tonight about prayer. So I'll make it short so we can, because we're going to pray quite often tonight throughout our lesson to learn about how to pray. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again so much for this wonderful opportunity to share the good news about you, Lord, and about the resurrection miracle of Jesus Christ and God's best gift to humanity, Jesus Christ as our Savior, salvation. We thank you for it, and we pray, Lord, that you would anoint me tonight. Help me to say what you want me to say. Prepare the hearts and minds of those who hear this tonight, and we pray that you would woo everyone who hears this unto you by your Spirit. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Amen. As I just said, we're going to be speaking tonight about prayer. Well, you might have some questions about it. There are different kinds of prayers. We don't expect to grow into a mature Christian and just pray one type of prayer our whole life. As we grow and mature, there are different kinds of prayers that the Lord God wants us to learn and to utilize for the furtherance and glory of His kingdom. So if you're a new Christian, you might be thinking, how do I pray? Is there a certain way God wants me to pray? Or what do I do when my prayers aren't answered? What if God answers my prayer differently than what I ask? Why pray at all? Why can't we just read the Bible and live our lives without praying? Well, these are all questions people have asked and many new Christians wonder about prayer and just what that means, what it is as a Christian. Well, we can't just live our life without reading the Bible and pray and grow in the Lord because it's our spiritual food and it's our spiritual connection to the life source, God, when we pray. If we consider, for example, that the tree of life has roots that go down deep into the ground and the green leaves up here grow and are nourished and the fruit is produced and our source of nutrition is the Lord God and the scripture being the soil, uh, it's a requirement to grow in the stature of Jesus Christ and to become a mature adult Christian that the Lord God wants each one of us to be. Now, you could just live your Christian life and not pray and listen and, and to the others around you pray, but you would probably remain a baby or maybe a teenage Christian. And then you wouldn't be, what's a word you might call that? A pillar in God's family. And we need pillars we need uh, pillars of strength around the world in the Christian community and the Bride of Christ to give strength to God's presence and His family in the world and to demonstrate God's power and glory for the furtherance of His kingdom in His plan. The more mature you get, the more you see the importance of prayer the more God can use you for His glory in the kingdom of God. Now, there are different kinds of prayers. I'll list some and then we'll go into them. But some of the different kinds of prayers are the salvation prayer, which many of you have heard me say many times, and many of you have said that prayer, to come to know the Lord and be a part of God's family. There's a prayer of agreement, which is a real prayer of strength, and there is a prayer of petition or request in which you might ask for things of the Lord God. And there's a prayer of intercession when you're praying for others. 
There's a prayer of commitment. There's a prayer of consecration or dedication. When you dedicate yourselves or your children to the Lord God. And there's a prayer in faith believing that God hears you. There's a prayer of worship. A type of prayer is worship of the Lord God. There's a prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Now they're all really necessary at some time through everyone's life. I think you will find. At least uh, I have found that in my over 60 years of being a Christian. And I've lived among Christians all that time. And I've seen all of these kinds of prayers. And I've seen prayers answered by God. And I've seen the glory of God demonstrated through the answering of prayers. And that's when it becomes so encouraging and uplifting. And what's the word I'm looking for? It really gives you assurance. And you know beyond all doubt that there is a God when you see the circumstances in which God answers prayer and God wants his glory to be shown because he cares about us he loves us and he wants you to know and be assured that he is real and he wants to be in our lives and a part of our lives well talking about the prayer of, let's start off with uh, the prayer of agreement. The prayer of agreement. Well, the prayer of agreement is the most important thing you need when you pray. Because our prayer multiplies when we are in agreement with those around us. In 1 Peter 3, 7, it says, We actually always need to be in agreement all the time, not just when we face a crisis. God honors the prayers of those who pay the price to live in unity. Pray the prayer of agreement, especially when you feel the need for a little extra prayer power. Now, I like it when the, when I recall and remember in the scripture uh, verse where Jesus said where two or more are gathered in my name there I am in the midst among you with you so when you have two or more together praying together in the name of Jesus he's there with us and he hears our prayer and he will answer it these are powerful prayers that can call upon the Lord to answer any kind of prayer. Now, that comes to mind, uh, answering our prayers might not always be just like we would want it or expect it. Because God knows all and sees all. He knows all the circumstances, much of which we might not know about. And God knows the best answer that will reveal himself to others in how he moves in answering our prayers. That's something that you learn more and more by experience as you see it. Now, there is one mistake in a way to pray and that some people get mixed up. And some people often use, if it is your will, Lord, uh, answer that prayer well there is a, a time or two when that's appropriate but it's not a way or a phrase to use every time you pray because it is God's will according to the scripture that we are a part of his family and we have the authority to call upon the Lord God in the name of Jesus for our prayers to be answered and it's his will that our prayers be answered. It's just that he might answer it differently than our will. So if you use that, be sure that you understand that you're using it properly. We know that Jesus did say that. As you could look at 
uh, how Jesus prayed when he prayed that, and it might answer your questions about that. But what we've come to find out is that some people's prayers are not being answered. And perhaps it's because you haven't learned yet, according to the scripture, the ways that the Lord God wants us to pray. There are what you might call rules or ways that the Lord God asks us or wants us to pray. After all, He is God. And He wants us to be in His audience according to what He requires. Because God is holy. And He cannot look upon sin. That's why we have salvation through and by the blood of Jesus Christ. So God looks upon us through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we are then holy because our sins are cleansed. But we're not holy within ourselves. We're only holy by the cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ that Christ performed when he died on the cross for our salvation. So when you learn about Christianity, you will find that everything reverts back to what happened, what Jesus Christ did at the cross. Because the crucifixion of Christ at the cross and his blood sacrifice started the new age of grace. The dispensation of grace is what we're living under now in all the time thereafter the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Before the time of Jesus Christ, they were living under the Old Testament rules, under the Ten Commandments, although we still believe those. But they didn't have the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. They had to... Uh, gain eternal life through following the commandments and God's holy ordinances and by the lamb sacrifices that the priest offered. Now we're going to see again, some of you who live long enough, will see again one day and we are approaching that time because the Jews and Israel are speaking of they're going to rebuild the Jewish temple and they're going to start blood animal sacrifices again of the perfect lamb. However, when they become a Christian and receive Jesus, they accept the fact that Jesus Christ is the eternal lamb sacrifice. So that will be a sign to you that the end is fast approaching and that we are near the end time when the only lamb sacrifice that really matters now Jesus will step again on the Mount of Olives in Israel and reveal himself to the whole world and rule and reign on earth for a thousand years. I'm looking forward to that day. I hope you are as well. And there will be no evil or wickedness then, for Satan will be bound for a thousand years and we will not have sickness, death, pain or the evils of Satan that are ravaging the world today through death and violence, starvation and deprivation, persecution. Those are all things of Satan. Those are all evil acts by evil people against others. Well, I got sidetracked on that. I didn't plan to talk about that. But I think the Lord directed me to share that. And if Dave is ready, we are going to uh, worship the Lord with these spirit-filled Christians the next 15 minutes or so because we're going to talk tonight about a kind of prayer that is worship and praise of the Lord. And for me, it's a big part of my life that helps me to feel connected to God. So whenever you're ready, Dave, you can start uh, the DVD with the Family Worship Center uh, singers praising and worship the Lord. And you can get more of this wonderful music to praise the Lord by at www.jsm.org. And you can buy those online. 
and have them mailed to you, or you can listen online as well to their live streaming TV. But I do believe that praise and worship is a great connection. Until he gets that started, I'll talk about the next kind of prayer is the prayer of petition. So if you're taking notes, so far number one was the prayer of agreement. Number two, now we're looking at the prayer of petition. This is a prayer that we can use randomly at any time. And this is something you need to know about. When we petition God, we're asking for something for ourselves. Now, it's okay to ask for things for yourself. We all have needs. And God cares about us, and He wants to meet our needs. Just remember, God and the Lord are not Santa Claus. They're not going to meet all our wants, necessarily. They're going to meet our needs. And needs are essential needs, like for food, shelter, water, protection. And then it gets into areas of maybe a job or a way to make a living or to take care of yourselves. You don't necessarily have to work a job with somebody else for God to meet your needs. But it's when we ask for needs for ourselves and our family. Now, there is nothing wrong, like I say, nothing wrong with praying for our needs. But we need to have a balanced prayer life in, we, in which we pray in different ways. And remember always to give thanks and praise to the Lord God. So, Dave, are you ready? We're hoping you can start the DVD of uh, Praise and Worship. I don't see you in there, Dave. So I hope you're watching, and we can start the Praise and Worship right now. There is the praise and thanksgiving kind of prayer, which we always give for certain every year on Thanksgiving, the third Thursday in November here in the United States but that's not often enough in my opinion I believe we need to praise the Lord and have a thankful heart and a thankful prayer on a regular basis and daily would be good even if it's a short prayer it's a wonderful thing to praise God for what he has done for us and what we believe he's going to do for us in the future after we've communicated our requests and our needs to him. Now, we should praise the Lord continually. It says in the psalm to pray continually, to have praises continually on our lips for the Lord God. For praises are like a sweet-smelling savor to the nostrils of the Lord God. He loves the sweet-smelling savor of the praises and worship of his people to him. But you know, it's easy to thank the Lord God in good times and to praise him when the times are good. But when you've learned to praise the Lord when the times are not as good, that's when you're maturing in the Lord God. And then you can look for the things that maybe you don't recognize every day to be thankful for. Even when we don't have all the things we want in life, we can be thankful for the things we do have. And when we look around at other people who are suffering or don't have as many of the things we have, we can be grateful for what we have and yet learn to pray for those who don't have that the Lord God will meet their needs as well. And that kind of prayer is the prayer of intercession. When we pray for the needs of others, we stand in the gap for the, another person, perhaps when they're too sick or too weak to pray, or distracted or in sin, been snared in sin, we can intercede in prayer for them. In Ezekiel 22.30 it says, If people have a need, we can intercede for them and expect to see them comforted and encouraged. 
while they are going through certain situations. We can then expect a suitable breakthrough for them concerning their need being met because we have been praying for them and interceding for them. I believe Dave has just come in and he can play a worship section for us. Just praise the Lord right now together as these singers worship the Lord together.
morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, 